Hello everyone, Zeep here, also known as a member of the soul searching Generation Z that has no idea what in the hell it wants to be. So I've been bored. For obvious reasons that I shouldn't mention unless I want YouTube to break down my door. While under this puncture, I decided to download the app TikTok, a popular application surrounding my age group of college kids. Essentially the modern era's version of what Vine used to be, but with what I'd argue a more diverse array of creativity and personalities. And the stuff I've found on there has been weird to say the least. I have hemorrhoids. Duct tape waste bill. Once you get it on, it's not easy to get it off, but it works like a charm. Waterproof, sweatproof. Yeah, there's some legitimately funny stuff on here, whether it be ironic or unironic. But overall, I'd say the sap isn't really for me. However, while going down this endless rabbit hole of TikTok videos of weirdos, I did discover quite a bizarre section, and that is the political TikTokers on the app. And oh boy, it's weird. <laughs> <laughs> Trigger warning. <laughs> I exist. I love Trump. Hey, hey, I'm a vote. Trump 2020, Trump 20. There's something really jarring about watching someone bring up such serious conservative talking points while pop music plays in the background. It's uncanny. But even putting that to the side and just analyzing the politics as a whole, the politics these kids are spewing, particularly the ones on the right, seems to be a relic of anti-SJW rhetoric of the mid-2010s. So what we're seeing here is a social media platform dominated by young people, allowing them to get more involved in political activism and discussions, debating each other and groups based on belief. And that's great. However, what they're discussing isn't even insanely with much merit. In fact, in the riot, it's really unoriginal conservative talking points that one would see on Fox News. I mean, some of these TikToks even start with stuff like, oh, this is going to trigger the snowflakes out there. <laughs> It's hilarious in a sad type of way. It's, in my opinion, a form of free speech that perhaps I'm not too accustomed to hear from. However, recently there has been a growing retaliation against these TikToks by far-right groups now invading the app. Depicting the talking points of conservative TikTokers such as Nick Videos as not far enough in their ideology, and just plain vanilla in the videos they're pushing out. And honestly, I can see their argument. <laughs> It's interesting to see this section of the ideology rebel against the less conservative. I'm of course talking about the Groypers, whom a vast majority of themselves are regarded as paleoconservatives, a throwback to the 1930s that overlapped with the old right and who stressed traditionalism and nationalism and opposed the New Deal. Essentially, they believe that the current Republican Party is one of fake conservatives, with ideology similar to that of 1990s Democrats, and that they, the paleoconservatives, are the true conservatives. God, I've said that word so goddamn much. It's associated with a certain individual who is one of the spearheads of the movement. His TikTok, however, was banned before he could promote much of anything to do with his movement. Watching this war play out is intriguing to say the least. They want drag queens reading stories to our children. They want our children to learn in schools no about- one's, No one is advocating. No one, no, yeah, no, no one's advocating, advocating for us to start doing- Let's take a look at some of the things he had uploaded, shall we? Uh, yeah. Something about this video gives me vibes similar to that of this image. Yeah, what I'm saying here is that it, it's embarrassing. 
Sure, they may not be arguing the exact same points as these individuals, but the movement seems to not be doing too well on TikTok. It throws me back to the YouTubers who would make videos and compilations of quote, Poning the libs? Except this time, it's Poning Ben and Charles Kirk. For them, there is a higher purpose in doing this, I understand that. In their idea, they're saving Zoomers from beta conservatism, but in reality, I think the movement on the app is lost. With TikTok banning their leader, and a lot of their talking points being seen as very far right, it's really hard to appeal to the masses with their ideology. The politics when in regards to the app mostly focuses on gender issues. And if we're judging by the metrics of Gen Z, Generation Z finds themselves more progressive than past generations, or at least they say they are. According to Teen Voig, Generation Z is the least partisan, with one third of them defining themselves as independent, which in regards to TikTok can prove to be quite dangerous, with young independents being impressionable. In the modern era of disinformation, spreading it can prove to be extremely harmful. A person with a large following on the platform can encourage false talking points or fake news coverage. Sure, the target audience for TikTok may be middle schoolers, but that may be part of what I consider a long game. Said kids would be indoctrinated into a particular form of thought that they may never never get out of due to said app. Essentially, it's a bunch of brainwashing and echo chambers. However, I will admit that this is a problem with social media as a whole, not exactly TikTok's fault. At first, I thought there wasn't really much of a point when it came to these political TikToks, and what seems to be a war between various forms of the ideological compass. The division in politics is a difficult bar to get over, and what type of influence will a 5 second video have anyways upon society at a larger scale? But then I realized. This could be the start of a political awakening for my generation, and I'm not trying to exaggerate. For example, let's take a look at the left on the app and analyze. Whatever you say! Okay, not you. There is a lot of promotion here for the preferred candidates and for preferred movements. I guess there is some sort of importance when it comes to these TikTok videos. That provides an arena of discussion whether it be cringy or not. Sure, these videos may be hard to watch, and sure it may come off as nothing really being said, but it is a hive mind of what the future may look like in regards to politics. It may be funny to state, but we might be seeing future senators and presidents on this app. We just don't know it yet. Discussion and debate is key when in terms to politics, and hopefully this app encourages voting in the coming elections, so that Generation Z is heard loud and clear at the polls. Maybe I was being too hard on the app. Because the way it encourages forms of discussion is beyond noble. Okay, yeah, never mind. 